Hello and welcome to another episode of Invad Entry. My name is James Taylor and today we are looking at a uh, an interesting uh, Python library called TinyDB. We're doing this part of Advent of Code. We're doing 24 libraries that are interesting, cool, fun, whatever, in 24 days. Uh, these are brief introductions to these libraries. Um, some are more fun, some are interesting, some are very serious. TinyDB is an interesting one because I think people may watch this and go, well, you should just use SQLite or you should just use your SQL Alchemy SQLite. Um, uh, there are times when I can see this being incredibly useful. So I think it's one that you should know about, having your your, your toolbox of libraries uh, that you can just drag out at the right opportunity. Um, interestingly, in, in, its, in its introduction, it actually does have a thing of why not to use it, which I think is really good. Uh, so if you want to use lots of things, if you want acid guarantees and things, don't use TinyDB. But there's a whole time of situations where you actually just want to stash information and get it back again quickly um, on a small amount of information as well. I think if you're going to put in thousands and thousands of rows or even, you know, you know, a million rows of data into this thing, I think you're going to have problems. It, 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 it actually is really cool. I, I can't stress how cool it's not just save stuff to a, a file. It actually has some really cool uh, functions and features to it, which I'll, I'll show some of them off now. So, um, the very simple thing to do here is from uh, pip install tinydb, you know, from tinydb import tinydb. Um, it's a document database rather than a relational database, which basically means uh, there is, it has a concept of tables, and tables are really groups of things that you're going to store. First of all, we'll go db equals uh, tiny db. I'm going to give it a file name here, mydb.json. Uh, so what it's actually going to do is actually going to save this as a JSON file. Um, and what you do is db.insert, uh, um, and you, you always pass it an object, uh, a dictionary to be precise, a dictionary. Um, so it will JSON serialize nicely. Uh, so be aware of that. I will probably tomorrow talk about um, models and uh, in a way that's abstract. Um, and, and we can look at that tomorrow. But for the moment, just accept these are going to be dictionary. So I'm going to do um, flavor uh, apple um, uh, volume oop, is going to be three. Right. And what that does is that adds it to the database. Right. So I, if I actually check in my text file, I've got a thing called my db.json here. Um, you'll see in this database, in the default table, there is now an index one, uh, something in there. Uh, what I can now do is I can then uh, insert more. Uh, so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to import random. I'm just going to do uh, flavors equals an array of apple, uh, pear, peach and uh, that's just that and then for i in range uh, uh, 20 db dot insert and fla uh, flavor is random dot choice uh, flavors um, uh, volume is equal to random dot rand int uh, 3 10 so uh, random amounts of numbers right so if I do dot db all now you'll see that there is a whole bunch of data in there of random things I want to do. What I'm now able to do is I can actually query this. Okay, so uh, the querying is a bit strange. So you have to do, you have to do um, uh, flavor equals query. You have to do this, you have to create this instance here. What you can then do is go db.search uh, flavor dot, these are, the, these are the objects we have. It's just written drink. Uh, let me change that to drink. Drink dot flavor equals um, pair. Um, do it correctly. Oh, comma query. It helps if you import the object you're trying to make. Um, and that there has queried this just for just for those pair ones. So very quickly I can get individual keys out or I can search collections like this. It gives me a way to loop over. It, it's, it's pretty funky. Uh, the other thing I can do really quickly is I can then actually put this as an or, so I can then or an and, so I can then do I put that in brackets there, and do and, whoop, get the right and, uh, drink dot volume is greater than two, or it's greater than uh, six. Uh, that has to be in brackets as well, um, just because, and there you go. It's now filtered that down. 
I can also say and or less or for or or whatever. So I can build up my queries and, and produce subsets. Notice these aren't query sets. So if I do uh, db search, if I do db search of that. I can't then dot search. This isn't like a Django query set. That that's not allowed. If, if I do drink the volume greater than six, there, um, that 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 it, it's not. It's it, the output is a list. It, you can't you can't then search it again. Um, you can also make more uh, tables. Um, and tables basically I can do something like a people equals db dot table. So it's attached that db object. So I'm giving it a name of people. And then I can do people.insert. And my object type here is going to be name is my name, JT. Everyone calls me JT. I know I say James Taylor at the start of every episode, but no one calls me JT. No one calls me uh, James, sorry. Everyone calls me JT. Or anything else, really. Um, I can now do people.all um, and get that back as well. Uh, so there's loads of cool things you do. Loads of cool ways of searching. You can reference things by ID. You can reference things by uh, document IDs. Um, th there are an awful lot of really cool features in the more advanced section as well. Uh, you can do things like um, how to reference the elements of the document, how you can search inside the documents, how you can negate queries uh, using on, ands, and ors. Um, you can also do things like don't have it stored in on disk. You can say I actually want to store this in memory. Uh, so you have uh, it can improve the efficiency of that and there are loads of really cool things you can do with this So it isn't just okay. Here's a way of you know It's not just save a JSON object or a list and saving it over and over it actually is a, 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 f a Functional queryable document database behind the scenes, which I think is the main reason why it, it has a benefit over So in like SQL Lite, which is actually a relational database um, of, of a source uh, it's, it's a file based relational database um, so I like this. I, I really like this. I, I think there are places in my hobbyist uh, life where I would use this. Um, there are even places I would use it in my professional life, but not in long running mission critical services. Maybe as an augment to, for example, um, Jupiter, where I'm doing data science and I want to save some information and come back to it. Or I want to have like a reference that I can look up. Um, so I can see this being useful in certain situations, but I do think people should respect that it's not a full-blown document database. Um, and if you wanted that, and you wanted ACID compliance especially, you should use a proper database and a proper interface to that. Um, so that's it, really. It, it, it is what it is. Uh, take it or leave it. Um, I really respect the amount of work that's gone into this. It, it, it does seem to be quite mature and well thought out. The documentation is good. Um, I think you can see here just how well the documentation is. Um, and it's also got some cool things about you can replace middleware. It's quite modular in how you can replace components with it and build your own compo uh, modules. Um, so yeah, I'm actually really impressed with this as a library. It is, it is a first glance thing, oh, it's just saving JSON. It's not. It's a really, really cool little library. Um, and, and it seems to be very lightweight as well. I think the great thing about it is that it just it just works really nicely. Um, and I love things that are well documented, clear, easy to use, and works nicely. Um, so on the list of 24 things you may never have heard about, um, this one, I, I, I doubt many of the viewers have heard about it, and, and I really think you should just go give it a go. See, see where you might find uses for it. Um, just remember, of course, if you're saving things to a disk uh, locally and it's an application, let's say you build this into a game or something, then someone can just edit the JSON file. So you may want to consider the objects that you save. You might want to sign them or put more data validation on the objects that you saved locally um, because those can be very easily modified out of the scope of the application. Um, uh, that is also true technically for databases in other places, but in particular here, I'd just be very aware that anything can open those files up and just modify the JSON of those files. Um, however, I think we'll deal with that probably uh, in tomorrow's episode, talk about how we can do better models of documents and document databases. But this as an underlying layer is fantastic. Anyway, we're trying to do 24 libraries in 24 days. It is currently day 19, uh, uh, which makes it Sunday, which means we've got uh, four more days, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Maybe that's five because it's zero index at 20. Um, five more days to go. And I'm really excited uh, to, to get those recorded and out there. Um, so hopefully, if you, they should be popping up on the screen over there now. Um, please click one. On, and if you're enjoying this series, uh, please hit like and subscribe. And leave us a comment if you 
have any thoughts about this library, positive or negative, I would honestly like to hear people's reaction. Um, give it a go. Python 2, Python 3, cross-platform. What more can you ask for?